この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますオーライディ、ウォーカムエブリワン、アイムティアブー、アンアイムヒアフォームーシーシー、エピソード4。アイクドゥアホーシピーヒアバウォーティサーラスウィークンウォーティエクスペクトフォーディスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバウォーティスウィークバ
Sure. Thank you. Back, forward, back. Oh, no. That doesn't feel right. I was super close to the surface. So it was a dream. And he goes out to that spot. That's super awesome for now. Okay, we saw broken blades and stuff. Oh, okay, he's a sharpener, I see. That makes more sense then. But he gets greedy and doesn't take the medicine. Okay. But imagine it on the other side. If he hadn't had that dream, he would blame himself for not having that dream. And not saving. Can't control it. Uh-huh. And what if he predicts disaster? But it's breaking the balance. And he didn't see it coming, did he? Your daughter? You don't get to choose what you dream about. Fuck. Even though he's utterly blameless. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, but it's never enough.
What did you dream, Jean? What? Oh. Nope. No. Not at all. Fully incorrect. Maybe that is true then. Or maybe it's related to the water. Did he? He fully doesn't deny it. It's true. Whoa. Whoa. He really did cause it, sort of. Got it. Okay. So we need the Mushi awakened in the sun. Right, he fully thought that he had contained it. Too dangerous. What are you trying to do? Trying to kill himself. Trying to kill himself. Oh, I don't want this tragedy. Oh, man. Dreaming. I'm 
said, don't talk to people who are speaking in their sleep. Right, there's no fault here. No, no, no. There's no malice here. Ha. <laughs> eh? is communicating yeah oh boy don't talk to people who are talking in their sleep whoa that's so fucking cool just the shoji screen comes alive oh I see. That's a lot of mushy. What scenes? What shots? What the hell? Oh, no. Forgiveness. Whoa, you're going to get stuck in your dreams. Fire. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Pillow pathway. Too late. Oh. It's linked to you somehow. Ginkgo knows 
uh, medicine very well. Soul storage. Okay, okay, okay. You had to be, I assume. That makes a lot of sense. Pretty reasonable fear. Oh my goodness. So I've caught on and people have mentioned that every ED is completely different and is made particularly for the episode, which is amazing. The next episode is... The Traveling Swamp. The Swamp of the Travels. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Tiabu. I came here for Yashike Mushishi stuff, and I got a depressing horror episode. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! Wow, what a freaking story. A, an extraordinarily good story, really well done, really well put together. But gosh, do I not like that? Um, I mean, again, how do we, how do I, how do I separate this when I'm explaining how I'm separating this? I'm trying to separate the fact that God, I don't like stories that end with unhappy endings. From God, that was a really well done unhappy ending. How do I, how do I separate the two? I don't know. This is the first episode that really feels that lean, leans into the horror element, the unknown, the the impossible to comprehend, and it's also the first time that we see Ginkgo fail. Uh, 
effectively he does twice, maybe three times. First, when he assumes that the medicine that he gives the guy is going to work, and it doesn't. Um, I mean, it does, but not in the way that he had hoped. It doesn't restrain him. It doesn't contain him. He puts too much trust in this man to take the medicine. I think my favorite part of the episode, my favorite visual in the episode is by far the shogi, the show, show G, show G screen behind him coming alive with, with dream sequences. That's gorgeous and incredibly thoughtful and just, uh, just amazing. But I think my favorite thing is the buildup of this tension within the character as he realizes that his dreams might be powerful and useful for good um, and becomes tempted to not take the medicine and instead allow the dreams to come. And that temptation comes on all fronts, right? The first front is benefits for us, benefits for my family. My family is well fed. We have gifts of food from the other villagers, things that we probably couldn't get if I were just doing the, the blade sharpening. But then it becomes worse and it becomes more. If only I had seen more dreams, I would have been able to save my daughter. <laughs> and I wasn't. I would have been able to save this and stop this and do this and cause more good. And that's a form of greed. It's a, an understandable and entirely reasonable form of greed and one that I can't indict. I can't say that he's like wrong to want that. But it is a form of greed. A gift given and then taken to an extreme. Premonitions are dangerous things. The power to see the future is of the enemy. I love main guy's character design. I think it's really striking. And there's something like there's something deep and sad in his eyes. There's depth to this character design that I can't explain. And a part of it is, of course, how he's shot and how he's portrayed. This whole sequence of background images of the the, the now dilapidated location is amazing. Again, backgrounds are fantastic. The flow of time that we see this tree with just the very barest buds of, of petals when before we saw it with a few more, so we know we've passed almost a year. We walk in and he's still there, tools left untouched, beard overgrown, wondering. Happy, building into terror, isolation, fear, and one terrible, terrible dream. And the crazy thing is, I thought that he was wrong. I thought that Ginkgo told him the truth, because why would Ginkgo lie? But I was wrong. Ginkgo did lie. He lied about the way that those Mushi work. And he probably shouldn't have. That choice, that choice really does cause a lot of these problems. It's hard to lay, lay true blame at Ginkgo's feet, or at the feet of this man, or at the feet of anyone else, or at the feet of the Mushi even. They're just alive, right? You don't, you can't shame a wolf for killing a sheep, right? It's what the wolf is going to do. It's alive. It's going to do that. But it's not, it's not even quite like that, right? Like a, a wolf killing a sheep has a particular hunter instinct to it. It's more like you can't blame poisonous mold for growing in a, a damp bathroom and growing out into the walls, right? And then causing respiratory problems for the people who live there. You, it's the mold's fault, but you can't blame it. And you can't necessarily blame whoever didn't keep the bathroom completely clean either, right? It's just a part of nature that was interacted with poorly. But is there fault? No, there's no fault here. There's no blame here. Just tragedy. And that's the worst kind of tragedy. 
the easier to wrap our heads around kinds of tragedy are the ones where there's a villain, where there's somebody evil, where the tragedy happens because Lord Fuckboy destroys a whole city. That's tragedy, right? Okay, great. What about when a volcano erupts and destroys a whole city? Whose fault is that? The fault of the people who built a city near a volcano, not necessarily knowing that it was one? The fault of the volcano, which doesn't know what people are or care? No, it's no one's fault. And that hurts more, I think. Because it raises the question of why when there isn't a why. The question is irrelevant. There's no why here. That's not how things work. That's not how the universe is. Seeking answers and seeking... Seeking justifications and rationality in an irrational universe is insanity. Nearly by definition. I think it's part of the reason why people struggle so often with the, the concept of, of deities, of God or gods. Because... Gods and are, are a, an attempt to answer that why. At least I think they are. An attempt to answer the why do these things happen. But when we ask about bad things happening to people who don't deserve them, the answers fall apart. Why did God do this? Well, God didn't. Because God doesn't fucking exist. Probably. And if God does exist, God doesn't care about us very much. Why was there a tsunami? I don't know. The tsunami isn't something that he dreamed of. He didn't dream of it. If he had, he could have warned people. But he didn't cause that. That great disaster wiped out a large portion of the village, right? And his daughter. But that wasn't his fault. The spreading mold was. It came from his dream. A fear manifesting into reality. What a horrifying idea. But on both fronts. Horrifying that we have no control. And horrifying that maybe we do. Horrible either way. Not a fun episode of Mushishi. Not fun at all. Really excellent. Forces the asking of questions. Questions without answers. Which are, I don't know, I think they're the most interesting kind, usually. Because they force you to keep asking. Okay, I'm going to... How do I do this? Let me see how the how the fast forward function works in MPC. It's not fast enough for my purposes. Um, give me a second. It's going to be more than a second on my end, but a second for you. While I'm waiting for some programs to load and for some processing to happen, which is going on, which might cause some jitters in the video, but I don't know. I don't care. Um, I noticed something, and I mentioned it in my Discord last night, but I noticed something that keeps happening to me, which is that after I record the videos, I do some stuff to them, and then I bring them into an editor, and then I edit them up and make them into the timer version and the picture-in-picture -picture version, and then I hit render, and when it's rendering out, it ends up running at like 200 frames per second, so, so like five to eight times the speed of the actual video. And when that's going past, I often just see it out of the corner of my eye, especially the picture-in-picture -picture version, which I gener generally render first, which means that I get to then re-watch the episode without sound um, at an incredibly high speed with great fluidity, really, really smoothly because it's rendering out each frame and showing each frame as it renders. And what I noticed as I'm letting that happen is that I see things in the show that I didn't see before. Um, 
part of it is that it's moving so quickly that it feels like I'm flipping through storyboards and just seeing layouts, 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 layouts. And it gives me a better feeling of the flow of the episode overall and the way that it's constructed than I can get either by watching through it multiple times or by skimming through it or whatever, because skimming, I obviously necessarily miss things. But it gives me a really good sense of the timing of different sequences and different scenes and the way everything is laid out. So I wanna, what I want to try to do and I think this is a great episode to try to do it with just because it's beautiful and terrifying and really interesting, um, is I want to throw the video into my editor and run it past at extremely high speed, hopefully high enough speed that copyright on YouTube doesn't just insta flag it so that I can actually put it in the video um, on the timer version, hopefully, and just run through it at super high speed and see what we see if we recognize and notice anything super unique or different. Um, We'll see. We'll see if this is possible, and we'll see if it's even valuable um, in in this context. But I want to try it. And the issue is that when I, if I do it with a, a video player, like MPC, which I've been using now, or with VLC, when you sk skip them up to a high playback speed, um, they skip through the video instead of just going through it smoothly. So I'm bringing it into my video editor, which will do the opposite, which will actually go smoothly, I hope. We'll see. We'll see if it works. Okay, so I, I've muxed the two videos, uh, uh, or no, the video for this uh, into a new video for this uh, as an MP4. I don't think it'll have subtitles um, because those are hard to get onto a situation, onto a thing like this. But I can drag it into the editor, and I should be able to to full screen it, and I am. And I'm gonna mute it. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring a thing over here okay okay if i'm full screened i think this works cool and then i'm going to pump the speed it starts skipping okay that sequence flash 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 through in talk 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 That is such a striking scene. Reaching out for his wife, letting his hand fall. This is a really powerful sequence as well. A, a classic use of restrained um, character animation and like focus on a single single action to give us a really in-depth understanding of what a character feels. It's so... It's so odd to me, it's almost paradoxical that when we get smaller and more focused on specific motions, the emotion that's conveyed by them is increased. Like, we focus directly on his hands, we get more emotion out of that than we would if we were showing his face and his hands. It's interesting. And this is just horrible. Horrifying. And mysterious. We don't get to really understand what's going on. But he's right. It starts with his wife and spreads out from there. Now this is meant to be one of the more striking shots of the episode, I think. That glow, the long shadow, and a man isolated in a village dead. Terrible. That line of glow right next to Ginkgo is awesome. I didn't notice that before. That's awesome. Almost as though it's coming from his eye down. So we explain the truth, and he seeks the, the goal, and begins speaking in his sleep, although we've been warned not to speak to people. And there they are, all the Mushi. Infinite, infinite, and Utopia calls to him. Endless fields of golden grain, a family alive, a last moment with them, and himself asleep, flames. They come through his pillow. Slice.
And amazingly, surprisingly, tragically, he lives on. For a time. But he's terrified to sleep. And what kind of life is that? Hell of an episode of Mushishi there, eh? Hell of an episode. Okay. Let's... Um... Let's watch another one. I don't have... I, I, I got nothing more to say here. Let's watch another one. I'm gonna take a break, do a sinky thing, be back in a moment. Peace. All right, welcome back. We're good to go for Mushishi episode five, The Traveling Swamp. I think it was The Traveling Swamp. Sounds weird. Let's find out how weird it is. Beep beep timer. Ocean. That's a skeleton. So this is where Mush where uh, Ginkgo goes to trade his weird treasures. <laughs> Got him. Ah, trade. What a shot. Which one? A new one. The Traveling Swamp. What's on your hand? Oh, okay, that's just a leaf. Hi, do you have green hair? I'm pretty sure that lady had green hair. The swamp was following. Oh, it would be gone. Oh. I doubt it. I bet you it's a mushy she or mushy. Hello, you definitely do have green hair.
You're also really pretty. Why, why, what? It's the same swamp. Like jade green. Or as if she's a part of the swamp itself. All right, let's go. I'll leave you to it. Bye now. You just did. No. No, certainly not. Why? Or are you it? He's seen some crazy stuff. Yeah. Better to believe it's a real thing and then discover that it's not than to believe it's not and then discover that it is. Is that your name? Living creature. Oh. Oh, that's some Aboleth stuff. No, thank you. Oh. Oh. -ha. Yeah, pretty much all bets are off then. Just because you live in it or because you're a part of it? Whoa. Uh -huh. So you were a person before. Mm -hmm. So when it seeps into the ground, you do too? Weird.
Hello, swamp. Oh, okay, never mind, just cloak. What? Oh, she's a ritual sacrifice. <laughs> a gift to the ocean, eh? God, the soundtrack is so freaking amazing. Bah! Whoa. Now, where is she? She doesn't control it. Okay. Bye. Pop. Get a freaking jar of swamp water. Oh. Okay. She's died once already. Ginkgo wants as much as possible to preserve life. Become with the, one with the endless water. And back here we go. Sure, sure. <laughs> Great. moves and shifts and changes and they follow old paths porous able for water to transfer through 
Ya. Ya. Life after death, which then loops. that work can't can that work a net to catch an incorporeal mushy thing oh maybe <laughs> will its death regenerate rejuvenate the sea part of the cycle Trying to catch the girl. Guilt. That's what the green girl wants to do, maybe. <sighs> Whoa. Okay. Patience. Yeah, I heard that. Oh, shit. Um, I don't think a net is going to work here. Slips between our fingers. Ah, oh, the kimono remains, but the girl is gone. Oh, my gosh, another failure, sort of. But what will happen to the fish? I bet it will rejuvenate the life of the sea. Or do we not get to find out? Oh. A body? 
A girl. What? She's getting color back. Hi. Yeah, but that's that's nature. And so she lives on. Uh huh. Hmm. Oh. Like a salmon. Life, death, rebirth, choice, and the choice to live on. Life, death, rebirth, life, death, rebirth, live again. The swamp dies and feeds the people, feeds the fish. Oh my god, I like this episode a lot. Oh, what a great ending image. That's a real photo, isn't it? Those who inhale the dew. Whoa. Cool. Okay. So two things. One, as a single episode story, absolutely fantastic. Gingo travels somewhere, sees swamps. 
meets a strange green-haired girl who lives in the swamp. We discover over the course of a tiny flashback that she was a sacrifice to the sea to save her village. A willing sacrifice. Maybe not right, maybe not correct, but willing. And hailed as a hero for it. We discover that the swamp is moving, shifting. And indeed, it is moving to its place to die, spreading its offspring as it does. Again, mirroring the fish that swim upstream to, 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 to breed, to lay their eggs, to fertilize those eggs. Everything that we've done in the previous episodes comes around. All the objects that, that Ginkgo has been grabbing and taking with him come together, and we find out that he's trying to trade them to a collector and enthusiast, and potentially another Mushishi, Adashino, since he knows so much, it seems like he might be. But Ginkgo calls him a collector. The swamp is so freaking gorgeous. Look at the way that, that each edge of these trees is lit. It creates so much depth. Again, depth through lighting and varied lighting over the course of the, the forest. The swampy area. And she is like a, a nymph almost in a Greek tradition, but entirely different. But she's not a spirit. She's a, a person who's become inundated with some level of spiritual something. Back to the sea that she was cast into. And it is itself a suiko, a liquid mushi that turns those things that it touches into water, that incorporates life within, into itself, changes it, drains it of power, and moves on. It is like a living entity, right? This swamp. And eventually, like all living things, it reaches the end of its lifespan and dies. And it knows that it's going to die, and it chooses to die in a certain way, in a certain place spreads its offspring across the land and finds and spreads itself, its own body, its own nutrients, everything that it's gathered out into the sea, creating bounty and beautiful harvests. Come back to Ginkgo's desire to preserve life. And in a sense, we answer some of the questions that I had about the previous episode. Why did Ginkgo lie to him in the first place about what the Mushi inside the man's dreams were? And why did he try so desperately to save the guy? It's because Ginkgo has an incredible respect for life in a, in a, in a near Buddhist sense. Um, obviously, Mushi is closer, if you want to draw analogs to real-world religious ideals, to a spiritualist Shinto set of beliefs. But it's also woven and inundated with this non-dualism and, and this Buddhist perspective on preserving life at any cost, almost. So we begin to understand that. The problem, the problem with that is that Ginkgo's beliefs about preserving life, as far as I can determine, extend to Mushi. So when Mushi and humans come into conflict, which side does he fall on? It fall on it neither and both. He wants to preserve them all, which puts him in really difficult positions. And I'm excited and terrified to see more of that. Because in those situations, there may not be good answers. We saw in the previous episode that there weren't good answers. Or at the very least, the choices that Ginkgo made didn't lead to good conclusions. Not only did he not end up preserving the, the life of the knife sharpener, but the tsunami came and the whole village got turned into freaking mold. But here, he's able to allow... This is a different... It's a failure that he drags success out of. The Mushi is allowed to continue its life cycle and create the rejuvenation of life in the sea, and they are able to save the girl. It's almost too good to be true, but it is. I would like to note that this is the first action-esque sequence we've really had in Mushishi, and it's super cool. I mean, it's not like, oh, this is the greatest Sako God that I've ever seen, but it is believable a giant flood from the outside coming into the water. And it is believable that we have this moment as he raises a harpoon and, and Ginkgo goes, no, 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 no. We're trying to save this. We're trying to save it, not destroy it. But we lose the girl. 
we fail, and we get this incredible, incredible shot before we transition back to the present. And the harvest is bountiful, but the girl is alive, gelatinous, the color sucked from her, the seawater sucked from her. She brought us so much good. And she felt the swamp dying, the life leaving it, but that is a part of life itself. And so she decides to live on. Also, her character design is super, super, super similar to Riza Hawkeye. Um, just, wait, is it Riza Hawkeye? No, it's the, it's the dark-haired one. Lan Fawn? That doesn't track. I'm thinking of Maria Ross. That's who I'm thinking of. Second Lieutenant Maria, Maria Ross. Okay. That is exactly who I'm thinking of, and I, I do think she looks a lot like her. Just a weird character design thing that kind of... It's particularly this scene. But she loses her abilities and chooses life. She has to choose it. Each individual has to choose it. And Ginkgo understands something more. One of the coolest things about this is to me, is actually the conversation about rivers creating sedimentary layers that even after the river changes its course remain as underground waterways. The idea that great courses in the world live on after their own deaths is something really powerful. And this episode encapsulates a whole lot. Uh, uh, it doesn't encapsulate them because they remain open questions, which is kind of cool. Um, but it contains a lot of symbolic stuff around life, death, rebirth, live again. That cycle is repeated throughout the episode. We talk about the previous instances that Ginkgo has seen, especially um, uh, the grandmother who chooses a midlife, a thing in between, something that he finds horrible. But then she... The girl in the swamp lives, dies, lives again in the swamp, dies with the swamp, and lives again as a person once more. The swamp lives, goes to its death, and is reborn in its offspring while seeding new life into the sea. The rivers live, create pathways, die and yet the pathways remain and they live on as something different as a different river but also as their underground selves something about that resonates with me powerfully what an interesting episode what an interesting episode to come right after the previous episode this show makes me think a lot not necessarily to draw conclusions it leaves things too open to be making specific statements. I think there are two primary ways that shows teach us things. One is by just showing us truths and giving us answers, and the other by refusing in every possible way to give us answers and instead simply forcing us to ask more questions. Ushishi is the latter. This is a question-creating show. Every episode that we watch lives as we watch it, dies as we finish it, and is reborn in the questions that it seeds within our minds. That's freaking cool! My favorite thing in anime, my favorite thing in any piece of media ever, is when there is resonance between what a show is and what a show does, right? And the, the easy example for this is Symphogear. Symphogear is a show about people connecting to other people across boundaries. Symphogear as a show connects to people across boundaries via music. And the, the first thing is also via music. It, the, both, it's the same. It does the same thing. Gorn Lagan, great example. Gurren Lagan is about taking your own drive and twisting it through the universe in order to reshape the world around you. Gurren Lagan as a show does exactly that by twisting its ideas into you and changing you and unlocking things inside. At least to me. 
I liked Mushishi before this episode. I think this episode has won me over to Mushishi um, in, in a different way, in a more way. Uh, I don't know how to express it more than that. I, I think it wins. I think um, any reservations, I didn't have any, but they're gone now. This is fascinating. And I'm excited for more. I'm going to go sit and think about a lot of these questions while I edit and render out this show. Um, for now, we're going to call it there, and we'll move on to more episodes next week. If I have any particularly interesting revelations, I'll share them at the beginning of next week's video. Otherwise, I will just see you for the next couple episodes of Mushishi in a week's time. Peace.